basically Friday morning, the 29th of December. Fired up the shredder to start shredding tires, normal day, and somehow fire started on the left side of the machine down underneath. Uh, my guys grabbed every fire extinguisher in the building, went out, tried to extinguish it, and went out of control real fast. So fast that the Grand Traverse Rural Fire Department couldn't contain the blaze at the Five Acre Tire Recycling Facility in Grawn, Michigan. Strong southwest winds had spread the fire to a massive 30-foot mound of tires. A limited water supply and the speed at which the fire was moving made fighting the fire seem impossible. Additional fire companies arrived, but hesitated to put their equipment into the blaze due to the extreme conditions. We uh, surveyed the situation. At that time, we monitored the, uh, the fire and did whatever we could do to limit the uh, spread of it during the day. And uh, at about midnight, uh, it, was, it was apparent that uh, we were going to have to call in some outside agencies uh, from, uh, from the state and uh, federal government to give us some, some assistance. Rose Ellison, a Region 5 EPA on-scene coordinator, received the call and mobilized a technical assistance team to the Grand site. Basically, when we got to the site, the entire tire pile was on fire, and the fire department and the local um, uh, emergency manager were looking at uh, ideas and ways to how, to how to attack it to put it out. So they started setting up the attack as to how to get the engines in, how to get the water supply in, and started making an attempt again, whether it was going to be with foam or with water in order to suppress the fire. Early on, from the very early stages, I was told to let it burn, and I did, have, did not have that intention. We um, sat down with the responsible party, explained to him that he was responsible for the, the, um, the incident, and he agreed to, um, and, and we also told him that he needed to get a contractor out that night and within three hours he had a contractor on site and that morning the contractor and the um, uh, was here with their equipment getting ready to start the removal or the emergency action. As a precaution, 46 homes and an elementary school nearby were evacuated. Tire fires are notoriously difficult to put out and often burn for weeks. What made the tire fire at Carl's Reed treading so unique? was the large number of easily ignited shredded material confined to a relatively small area. The absence of fire lanes between the 30-foot piles also made it difficult for fire equipment to maneuver. A command post was set up at the evacuated school, and the team went to work on finding an effective method to battle the fire. The fire chief had his resources, uh, his uh, contacts, his uh, network, uh, he was researching uh, that avenue. I was researching uh, all of my contacts through the State Emergency Management Division. And, uh, of course, Rose was, was researching her uh, contacts through the uh, federal resource level. In addition, we had uh, the Internet hook up. The data that we found seemed pretty basic. Even in written material, you know, the number of the, the uh, written materials that we reviewed didn't really answer a lot of the questions that were applicable to this particular fire. After some experiments with foam and water proved unsuccessful, a mechanical method of fighting the fire was employed. Well, the approach taken was that uh, a hole would be excavated uh, to a, a, a depth of roughly 14 to 16 feet, as much reach as we could get with the excavation equipment safely. Then that the tires would then be moved using the owner's equipment to those pits. Once those pits were filled, then they were smothered with the dirt originally excavated. And it proceeded in a series of pits uh, all through the facility, trying to keep everything in a, in a local area and not having pits scattered around. So essentially what we've ended up with is, is a pretty much a continuous excavation housing burned and smoldering tires, of which, when I say smoldering, there are very few of them that are smoldering. Well, upon contact with air, uh, they're right back in flame again. Bury and smothering the tires was a viable solution, but presented some hazards of its own. 
The biggest challenge was keeping the operators of the excavation equipment and their machines safe and cool. The solution was a specialized vehicle used by military and airport firefighters called a crash rescue vehicle or crash truck. A crash truck is capable of de delivering large volumes of water uh, in a mobile fashion. We can pump water on the move. Uh, here we're hooked up with a water line. The equipment operator, as he backs off, will cool the operator and the equipment down. Then we'll hit the pile, knock the fire down so he can get back in. Although extinguishing the blaze was the primary concern, the emissions generated from one million burning tires raised a few questions. The most we're doing is putting the fire out. Now, that's the most we can do. But at the same time, we have a uh, air monitoring uh, regime set up where we uh, have certain points along the plume if we're taking samples. And we also have uh, two individuals from the Coast Guard strike team that are out chasing the plume all day long to assess uh, particular levels in the community. As far as the toxic materials in the smoke, we haven't detected any so far. Um, so, or detected very low levels of, of some uh, materials that you would expect from tire fires, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, a little bit of metals, but nothing that, that had any health officials concerned. Results from the emissions testing, along with other pertinent information, were presented during regular updates made to the public. In fact, the way the community responded to the entire effort was admirable. During the four-week response, volunteer firefighters from over a dozen departments pitched in, often sacrificing their paychecks as well as risking their lives to battle the blaze. Local businesses and individuals also did their part when the call went out for aid. The community effort has been tremendous. We've had over 200 volunteer firefighters and we've also had well over 200 donations from businesses and private people. They've been great. The kinds of things that people are providing are, first of all, moral support. Second, cash donations. They will come in and start doing an assessment. They've already been in here. The schools have been great. The kids have been great. Uh, I just can't say enough about the community, and I've lived here all my life. The work was painstaking and repetitive. But the firefighters continued the burial and smothering process, scooping the mounds of flaming debris and dumping them into the pits. Finally, after three and a half weeks, an end was in sight. I would say at this point we're within days of having this fire out. What we're trying to achieve is get the remaining piles into a manageable height, roughly six to eight feet, that we can uh, proceed to push sand up on top and smother the remainder uh, to leave it above ground mainly make it ease and clean up at this point for the owner. Well what will happen is once the fire is out, uh, Department of, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality during the, the fire to get a sample of the ash so they kind of have an idea of what's buried in the ground and then they'll pick up where we left off as far as uh, uh, any kind of assessment or cleanup or long-term monitoring. This has been a real pleasure. We've had a lot of um, volunteers. Um, we've had a lot of support from the community. I think that the um, personalities of a lot of the people involved, it's been going really well. Everybody's tired. Everybody's been working hard.